Zoom wouldn't work, so Barbara got stuck with a technical task that she normally doesn't do. I normally am not. This is not my area. My area is Just now. <laughs> Clearly, I'm very, you know, hopefully it's in the right group. For all I know, I put it right on my personal page. But we'll just hope. We'll see how it works. I trust you. So welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about committing to your business, stop doing a hobby, and to truly commit to having a company versus the business. Barbara, you want to jump in and start? Or? Absolutely. So first thing I just wanted to say is not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. And I feel like that's something that just has to be said. There are a lot of people that think, oh, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a business owner. I'm going to, you know, ha be half in, half out. I'm going to have so much freedom. Life is going to be great. And I have to tell you, we have to tell you, it's not going to be like that. There is actually a lot of work with growing a business or more likely what we really want is you to grow a sustainable company. And, um, there's no magic bullet. There's no, you know, pill to grow your business. There's no like wave the magic wand and it's going to happen. And so a lot of times people think, oh, all these, you know, experts out there, they say, just join my class, put up a funnel. And all of a sudden, all the clients are going to come and it just doesn't work that way. Anything you want to add on that, Terry? Yeah. So, and it takes commitment and it takes some work and it takes some energy. Um, and if you're doing a hobby, which you know, some of you are, okay, you're doing hobbies. You're not committed to your business. You're not committed to the growth. You think marketing is an expense. You think hiring a mentor or business strategist or consultant is an expense. Um, you don't get it. And I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm saying that to be truthful. People who commit to their business don't see it as a hobby. You see it as building wealth and time freedom, a legacy for their families. Those people know that marketing is an investment and they make that investment and nothing comes back to you in bigger and better ways than making that investment. Secondly, they also know that without some type of mentorship, strategist, consultant, um, they're gonna struggle. And you know, I get asked every day, I got asked today by somebody, why do you have you know, consultants? You've been making millions of dollars for 40 something years. I can help other people do it. It's easy for me to see. It's always different when you need to see it yourself. And I have people who are running much bigger, much further, much faster than me. I don't, you know, I don't take this as a hobby. I take it very seriously. The income that's derived, go, well, some of you know, goes to my foundation for kids. 90% of it goes there. I'm very blessed to be able to do that. And I also have created a legacy, money for my family, not a business. So Barbara's going to address the difference between a business and a company. Hopefully, how many people have really understood hobby versus business? If you understand hobby and you're like, stop the hobby, I want to know. I want, I want to hear like, end the hobby, stop the hobby. I, I want to see some comments on that, right? Stop the hobby, end the hobby. It's hobby mentality that is causing you not to be successful and people don't take you seriously. I don't take anybody seriously. Don't hire anybody who's not all, all in. Um, you know, I have like a nutrition coach and I have a personal trainer and all of these people and I don't go, oh, do you do this part time? Like on the side? Yeah, that'd be great. I go with people who are all in. Okay. So we'll do business versus company now that I think we got hobby in there. Okay. So we got hobby in there. So yeah, do like down with the hobby, death to the hobby, <laughs> whatever you want to put <laughs> down there, you know, no hobby. Um, so, the and, hobby. Yeah. Death to the hobby. Um, so now we're going to just talk really briefly about what is the difference between a business and a company. A business is something that you're working in, um, like, like kind of like an employee, you're the person, you're, you can't take a vacation, you're, you're the person, there's no automation, there's nothing in your company that can be sold, it's just literally you working, you know, in the business all the time. A sustainable company is something where you have systems in place, you have structures in place, it's something that you can sell, it's something like Terry mentioned that you know you can leave as a legacy. It's, it's not you doing everything and it will operate without you there. So you really need to build a company, you need to have all of the systems and structures in place. So if you wanted to take a vacation for six months, you'd still have income coming in and it wouldn't just go to crap. Anything you want to add on that? Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. So 
you know, I'm always very transparent. I tell on myself. So my very first business, <laughs> I was a speech language pathologist. I started my own clinic. And the only thing that I saw was that, well, Terry will go to work every day. Terry will work with patients. And every time she sees a patient, Terry will get paid. And that got really old really fast because I realized I couldn't ever expand. I couldn't make more money. There's only a going rate. Insurance only paid a certain amount. The day I decided to turn that into a company, everything changed. I went and I hired, I replaced myself. I hired other speech language pathologists and frankly, they were better than me. Being very transparent, it wasn't my, my thing. Uh, I hired physical therapists, I hired occupational therapists. And all of a sudden, we had a clinic that was comprehensive. It served everybody. It wasn't just a speech clinic anymore, which is how I started it. And somebody came and they bought it. I wasn't even looking to sell it. If it was me trading time for money, nobody would have bought it. I had standard operating procedures. I had systems. I had a well-oiled machine. So when I sold it, my two receptionists stayed, my medical billing person stayed, Everyone remained employed. The guy who bought it wasn't even a speech pathologist, didn't need to be. It all ran by itself. When I started every other company after that, I didn't go into it going, oh, I'm going to start a little business and I'll just do this one to one. And, you know, it's all me. Let's put your ego somewhere. Joel Bauer, one of our, our friends, always says, your ego is not your amigo. I could not freaking agree more. It's one of the, my favorite Joel Bauer quotes ever. I, I repeat it a lot. Get your ego out of it. Don't, don't be like, well, I'm the one that has to do the work. I'm the nutritional consultant or who cares? And by the way, there's other people who can do what you do. I know I'm maybe insulting you. You may think nobody does it the way I do it. You're never going to grow well. You're never going to grow a company. You are going to be a solopreneur who trades time for money. And by the way, that's the definition of a job. It's, it's what a job is. Yep. You trade time for money. So I'm guessing that you left a job because you wanted to start something that was yours. I wrote a book many years ago with Stephen Covey and he, he talked about, and you've probably heard Stephen Covey say this if you ever followed him, start with the end in mind. It's the best advice I ever heard and most people start a business and they don't start with the end in mind. They go, oh, I'm really passionate about helping people discover their dreams or I'm, I'm psychic and I'm really good at the whatever it is and then they get into their passion and they want to do their like passion thing and that's all they really want to do and i'll say just forget it that's a hobby forget it don't even bother the thing is if you jump in in that way and you're just trading time for money and trading time for money you have no asset you have no end in mind i have an end in mind okay i love what i do i don't plan to retire today tomorrow 10 years from now my husband and i both love what we do we plan to be active in what we do we don't understand the word retirement. Why would you stop doing something you love? However, I have an asset that doesn't need me. I could step away from entrepreneur and I could go, Barbara, you want to be the chief entrepreneur? Trust me, she could be it in a heartbeat. I'm replaceable, I'm duplicatable. I have many others along with Barbara that are protégés, master certified in my processes. They could step right in, in a heartbeat. If I drop dead in five minutes, they could be doing what I do. Heartrepreneur would stay. Partrepreneur, I want to continue to be around because it is a legacy, which means it's also a dynasty for my family. Money will always roll in whether I'm here or not. I've got 11 nieces and nephews that the company could support. I have my foundation where 90% of the profits from Partrepreneur currently go. What is your end game? Somebody write down end game. And I want to know, do you have an end game? Or are you just going, I just want to get clients, I want to get patients, I want to get customers, I just want to do what I do and I want to do it every single day. Then I'm just going to tell you point blank and don't mean to be rude. I mean to be honest and I will be. That is not a company. It is somebody trading time for dollars. You'll never make a lot of money consistently. And you have no end game and good luck because most people in not just the United States, the world never can even afford to retire. It's just never going to happen. So what's your end game? Sorry, Bart. I got kind of tested. No, that, that I mean, but it's, it's true. And, you know, working with you over the past couple of years, I've realized that it's so important because, um, if your mindset isn't there and you're not thinking of the future, 
or thinking of the end in mind, you know, just like Stephen Covey, it was Stephen Covey is what you said. I'm like, who is that? I don't read. I was like, I'm just, did I did that just come to me? Um, <laughs> I, I think it's critical. Um, even, you know, even with your business today, right? Like we're doing a strategic planning session, which we're inviting you to actually, it's on December 11th, I believe. No, December, what is it? December 10th. I always get them. Okay. You look. It's on a oh, Thursday. It's on yeah, a Thursday. Hang on. I think it's the tenth. Yeah, it's the tenth. Oh We're doing lives till the ninth. Okay. It's on the tenth from one to four um, Eastern time, and. Even with that, like we're getting you to think for the year, like how much money do you want to make? You know, I, um, I said this the other day, you know, if you want to make a million dollars in the year, it's 83,333,883. Oh my God, my mind. me, right? A month is a million dollars. And so if you're doing what Terry was talking about, you know, trading time for dollars and, and all that, you're not going to get there. So you really have to think about what is the end game? How are you going to get there? And I always say reverse engineer your vision. And so even, you know, I, I, we've done some things like with backwards planning, which I think is super important, you know, think, okay, well, I want to leave a multi-million dollar company that does this, that, and the other. Okay, so what do you need to do before that? What do you need to do before that? And just start really being intentional and start doing the plan. So we're doing a strategic planning session on December 10th from one to four. If you're interested in coming and starting to really plan out at least 2021, we don't have to go to the final vision right now. Although if you have it, that would definitely be good to put on your plan as well. Put um, SP, I think is what we said for strategic yeah, plan. SP, SP yeah. and I'll drop the link in there below because that's something that you really need to start thinking about now, especially for next year. If you don't have a plan for next year, you're um, way behind the curve. So, so I think that's really important. Let's talk about what does it mean to fully commit to your business? Um, you know, there are some shifts that you really need to make mentally to how, and I, I say business, I meant company, you know, to fully commit to your company, there's some shifts you really need to make. One is what we just talked about, thinking of it as a company, not a business. And that is so important. And so sometimes I get slipped up on the terms and at the same time, you have to keep correcting yourself because you really are looking for a company that like we talked about, that's an asset. Another mental shift that's really important is to understand that there's risk in what you're doing. You know, becoming an entrepreneur, uh, building a company is, it's a risk, right? And so you're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to hit things that will just say, oh my God, you know, I can't believe this happened. And it's really about looking at that as a learning opportunity instead of saying, oh, I'm done. You know, someone that's growing a real company doesn't give up when there's some risk or a failure or something happens. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, the only thing I'll say is, listen, just to be totally transparent, there's always going to be ups and downs in business, okay? Business is cyclical. And there are times, like Barbara and I were chatting this morning, I mean, the last couple of months, I was just like, holy crow, like we're adding more people to the team all the time to help the amount of people who are asking for help. And there are other times when, I don't know, there aren't so many people. That's just the way it is. Business is cyclical. You have to have a plan. So I didn't know a pandemic was coming. I'm not quite that smart. <laughs> um, however, I had a plan, a recession plan. So in case something would come, I don't know what, stock market crash, who knows what would come, that our business, our company would still be able to produce roughly the same amount of income that it's currently producing because that is the amount of income that I choose to give to my foundation that supports the number of people that work on my team that I want to pay. Um, and that does what it needs to do with the 10% that it needs to contribute to my family. If you don't have a plan, especially now, okay, we're not through this pandemic. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that there's going to be vaccines. I definitely know that they don't know how long the vaccines are even good for, okay? And if it's gonna handle every mutation and 
who knows when we're all going to actually really get the vaccine. So let's just say, and I don't mean to be Debbie Downer, but let's just say talking to my five friends who are all very involved in different aspects of this, they're saying April, May, or June might be vaccines for the average person, okay? I don't know if that's true, but I have five medical people that all told me the same. I'm going to use that. Let's just pretend. Go with me, even if you don't believe it. If you don't have a plan now for what you're going to be doing January 1st, you're going to be in not such good shape. You're going to be either where you are now or going backwards. Every single day, you are either incrementally moving towards more money, more wealth, more freedom, more free time, a legacy, an automated business machine, or you don't even know it, you're going this way. So that's the point that I think we really want to drive home today. Yep. Because like you said, I mean, May, June, what are you going to do? Sit on your butt between now and then and just hope that money's going to come? You know, I love that saying hope is not a plan, right? For your business, hope is not a flipping plan. So you need to start really planning. Another thing that I think is very important is acknowledging that growing slowly is healthy and that is typical. So not all businesses launch, go viral, get multiple six figures within the first month. That's the exception. That's not the rule. So um, yes, you know, it's exciting to build a business and it doesn't always happen really quickly. The income doesn't come really quickly. And many businesses can take six months, a year, or even several years to recoup their initial costs for, for starting their business. So I, I just want to put that out there because, you know, just because you hire the coach and you have the marketing and all of these things and you've invested money, it, it, it might take a little bit of time. So be patient and make that part of the plan. Not everyone is like running out the gate with, you know, high six figures the day they put their shingle out. Anything you want to add on that, Terry? Yeah, that's just a really good point. So I'm going to tell a little story. I usually, as you know, teach by story. So when I started my first business, I had a master's degree in speech language pathology, which basically meant I knew nothing about anything but how to diagnose speech pathology problems. That is okay. all. I didn't know a thing about business sales or marketing and neither of my parents had their own businesses. Like I, I didn't know anything. So I guess I did think, you know, I'm just going to put out a sign speech clinic. And I don't know. I think I, I really thought some of the people were going to come. Well, after three weeks um, <laughs> of having <laughs> expenses and overhead and an office and a receptionist, I went, shit, this ain't going to work. <laughs> Yeah. So I looked around and I thought, what do I do? Like, I don't know how to mark. I don't know how to do any of this. So being very transparent, it was extremely hard work. Um, the good news is once I got that off the ground, I took a lot of notes on what I did and I went, I don't know, maybe this is replicatable or duplicatable. Now, I have no idea if someone's going to come in and buy my business. That wasn't my game plan. I didn't have an end in mind, being transparent. Somebody comes in, they buy my business. Okay, now I don't have a business. I want to start another business. This time, I knew what I had to do. And I'm telling you transparently, it took time, money, and energy. And I committed to two things. One, dollars to marketing. Mm -hmm. And two, I went and got a mentor. And back in that day, I hired Zig Ziglar, okay? I still think he's the big Z. He's the greatest mentor on the planet. Okay. I still quote him. I still listen to his stuff. And, and I will tell you that I had no money. I had to get a small business loan to do that. I just knew that if I didn't invest, I was going to probably have something that failed. And because I did that, I grew that company with my husband. We grew that together at about 12 million bucks. Now I tell a story further down the road company much further down the road. I started with two gentlemen. We took it from zero to 88 million in four months. That's and it. And very transparent. What? That's, That's it. it. <laughs> I was going to say, and I'm going to say for all of you listening, again, that is not typical. So and that's, what yeah, that's the exception, not the rule. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I want to say. I want to, I want to make a point of this. Yeah. That was the right business in the right place at the right time with three people who worked, and I'm not exaggerating, over 80 hours a week each, nonstop, seven days a week, 
my commitment was, I want to grow this thing big. I want to grow it fast and I want out. And that's what I did. I walked away. Um, I, listen, you don't, you don't keep all $88 million. And people hear that, they go, oh my God. First of all, it's divided by three. Second of all, we had huge startup and overhead costs. So I walked away with a couple of million bucks, okay? That is not how most companies get built. That is not. So I'm telling you very honestly, it takes slow and steady wins the race. As a, as a master certified guerrilla marketing trainer and coach, one of the things I learned from J. Conrad Levinson when I wrote two books with him and when I trained under him was this. You deploy marketing weapons with a big S. <laughs> Not one weapon. You got a bunch of things going off at once. Why? Some are going to work really well and some are going to be rockets that are duds. However, you stay the course. Mm -hmm. You don't go, well, I'm trying this. That's not working so well. Let me try this. Oh, you know what? Today, I'm going to start a program uh, for people who want to do emotional clearing. Oh, I didn't get enough people in that. You know what? I'm going to be a LinkedIn expert. Oh, that didn't work real well. You know what? I'm going to teach people Instagram. You stay the course. That's the point I want to make. No, you're probably not going to do 88 million in four months. And, and you probably don't want to because it was crazy. However, every single day, your numbers should be going up. And if they're not, look at your numbers today and go, were they more, did I make more money today than yesterday? If you're just starting, did I have more leads today than yesterday? If the answers to any of this are no, I'll say this lovingly, get your ass to our strategic planning <laughs> session. <laughs> was that was the best. Like, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to curse at all on the live and before you said the word crow and I'm like, who says that? And now look at you yelling at people to come to the strategic plan. Yeah. You said it with love. I think, I think it's, it's pretty powerful. So some of the other things I heard besides um, get your ass to the strategic planning met meeting, meaning drop SP below if you want the link and I'll get that to you later. Um, the other things I heard is one focus, one goal, and I heard be consistent. You know, those were the, the things that, you know, you can't just try one thing and then say, oh, that's not working. I'm going to go over here. Or I'm going to start, you know, and all of that. And those, those are really, really important. The other thing I wanted to bring up about really building a sustainable um, company is making sure that your whole reason for doing it is not just financial. And I know you have strong feelings about that, right? Because there'll be people that say, oh, Terry, I want to build a multi-million dollar business. What do you say to something like that? I'm going to always ask people why. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, you, there's a million ways to make money. If you're not making money, I can help you make money in so many different ways. You can make money in a million ways. But if you're all about just making money, I actually, and Barbara goes, we don't want to work with you. No. Um, it's got to be more than that. And, and if you're a workaholic who wants to work, you know, 40 hours a week, have no life, spend no time with your kids, your family, go on vacation, has no hobbies, could care less about your health and well-being, also don't want to work with you. We want people who want to have a life, who want to create a life by design, and then be in a company that they own, that they run, that they manage, that they sit in the CEO chair of, and that that company really makes a difference for people. That's really what Heart Entrepreneur stands for. Absolutely. Um, some actions that I think are really important or that we think are important for people to take that are really looking at building a sustainable company um, the first, of course, is get your butt in our strategic planning session. <laughs> so again, put SP below. Not, you know, no shameless plug. I mean, it's it's free. We're not getting anything from it. We're donating um, three hours of both of our time. We've done this with our clients in the past, and they have paid quite a bit of money for these sessions, and we're giving this to you as a gift. So SP if you're in. I think the other pieces are um, really set some 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 reasonable expectations for yourself and make sure they're clear. So, you know, you'll have a plan of what you want to achieve. And then, and, and sometimes it's good to run it by someone that's done it before. So they can say to you, Hey, can you really do this? Are you really going to do 75 Facebook lives in two days? Like, is that really going to work for you? And so having something that's reasonable and that's clear and that's not um, overtaxing you is something that's really important. Did you want to add anything on that? 
I, I think that, you know, you said it really clearly. I, I, I just want people to really get this. Like, we want to help you move from a hobby to a company. We want to help you move from a business to a company. We want you to have the kind of amazing lives and freedom and free time that we have and the wealth and the, the income that you desire and to make a difference for your clients, your customers, your patients. That's what we want. And we know, and that's what we're giving you. We're donating three hours. Each of us, you're getting three hours of each of our time together. We're donating it to you because if you don't have a strategic plan, you're not going anywhere. The other thing I wanted to add on there is find a mentor, find someone who's a coach. I know um, Terry mentioned it before, you know, we'll be that for you at that strategic planning meeting. What I really hate to see is when folks get, um, and I know this, you probably have feelings about this, when folks find accountability partners that are in the same place or worse than they are. So I, I just want to encourage you hire someone, invest the time, money, and energy you need to really commit to your business. Because if you are asking people that are not successful in their own businesses, how to do things, you're going to be, you're going to be like, I, I don't know what the right word is up shit's Creek, I guess, <laughs> without a paddle, because I have seen so many people say, Oh, let's be accountability partners for each other. And if your accountability partner is making less money than you or not even, you know, not even like a hundred bucks more than you, um, time to get rid of your accountability partner and find someone that's actually walked that path before that can hold your hand, that can nurture you, that can support you, and that can push you when you need to be pushed. I think that's one of the most important things. You know, I tried to grow a business for so many years and I did it by trial and error and it was um, spray and pray as we'll talk about later on and um, in one of our other lives but it really is about like throwing spaghetti against the wall just hoping something would stick and on the outside it looked great but behind the scenes it was a disaster and I was too proud too smart whatever it was I didn't want to ask for help and then in my 40s I know you thought I was you all thought I was only 22 but in my 40s I, I, I realized that I needed some support. And so I found the best mentor. Um, she's above me. I don't know if it's above on in Facebook live or for side by side, but it that person because she's done it before. And I, I invested the time, money and energy. And yeah, it sometimes it is scary when you're starting a business and you have to make investments that you weren't planning on making and all of these things. And I would do it all over again a million times over because the return on my investment was amazing and i really want you to realize that it does take money to grow your business so i know i said a couple of things there i said money i said mentor i said get rid of those crappy accountability partners but all of those things are really important to go into a sustainable company did you want to add anything there yeah I, first i just want to say that i'm really glad that you mentioned this because I don't remember which mentor taught me this. I've had a lot of mentors over the years. But I had a mentor that said to me, it might have been Jay Abraham, if you're not willing to put 20% of everything, you've heard me say this, I believe, of every dollar that you make right back in your business, you don't touch it, you don't use it, you, you pretend you don't have it, it goes right back in your business for either marketing or you're not willing to initially invest in mentorship, consultant strategists that are running faster than you. It, it was Jay Abraham. He said, um, don't, don't start a business. And we weren't even talking about a company. We're talking about a business. He said, don't even start. I, not knowing what I know now, you know, I hired Zig Ziglar and I've, over the last 43 years, I've, don't tell Mark. I've spent close to $2 million on mentors, courses, trainings. That's and it. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Um, Barbara knows I just spent a very huge amount of money and I'm going through a course that's, honest to God, it was easier to get my PhD, which wasn't easy. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, I'm, a, I'm a continuous learner and I invest in myself and in my company. We put 20% of every dime into marketing. Okay, every time, even when we don't even, we're like, we're too busy, we can't take people, always be marketing. It's an expression I say a lot. The other thing that we do in addition to that is we make 
absolutely sure that we always have mentors, strategists, and consultants. Always. Like, I wouldn't go a day without one. Um, I have them in my life. I have them in my relationship. And I have them in my business. So if you don't have that, I, I just really feel like you're missing something. I'm just being very honest. You're really missing something. And it's something that you need. And, and I don't care you know, if you hire us or you work with somebody else. Well, hire us. I, know, I, I was going to say, what do you mean you don't care? I care. <laughs> Put in there, I care. Put down there, I care. <laughs> the, you know, the truth is, you know, yes, if you're right for us, we'd love to have you hire us. But, but I just really want you to, to hire whoever it is that can truly help you. Um, and, and you need to do it. You definitely need to do it. Yep. I, I think I think that's probably all that I have for today. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to add, except, um, again, put SP in the comments and I will get you the link for our strategic planning session. I really would not miss it. It's next week, I believe. It's, it's, next, week. it's next week already. Yeah, it's already next week. Good Lord. Yeah. So, you know, join us, make sure you do it. We're donating our time, our energy and our process. It's a proprietary process. We're giving it all to you. So um, any comments, any summaries, Velma, I saw earlier that you summarized what you learned yesterday and did a standalone post in the group. That is totally awesome. That totally rocks. Uh, so go ahead, do it, do more. Let's see you. And um, we'll see you tomorrow night live at five. Live right at here. five. All right. Bye, Bye everybody.